So the question is, can either Raven or Blackbird trade a different, you know, place orders on a on a different instrument other than the chart that it is running on? So the example given is this trader wanted to generate, you know, bloodhound signals on something like the SPY ETF, right? The S&P ETF you know, generate signals on that and then have, you know, uh, Raven or Blackbird uh, submit orders, uh, submit option orders, right? Uh, buy and sell option orders, you know, or possibly, you know, have Bloodhound generating signals from the QQQ, right? Another ETF of the NASDAQ. And again, based on those QQQ, you know, signals, then trade options you know on the nasdaq options there right so that can be done but it's very limited right that's very limited so let me first state that blackbird and raven are not specifically built to trade other instruments to trade a different instrument than what the chart is running on right so this is a a workaround, a very limited kind of workaround possibility um, that can work, you know, but again, you know, it is very limited. So just have that understanding there. So first, let me set up some kind of Bloodhound example first on what needs to be done in Bloodhound. All right. So let's see here. Let me... Um, yeah, and to, I guess to provide an example, actually, hold on, let me, I need to check what kind of data I have here. So let me first see, let's see, indexes, well, let me see if I have the QQQ data there. Let's see if we have any QQQ data. All right, good, we do. So, right, so here's a one minute chart, right, of the QQQ. And then here is the um, NQ futures contract, right? So I will, I'll use these two different instruments as my example here, right? So we're gonna use the um, ETF, the QQQ ETF to generate the signals and then have the orders placed on the NQ, all right? So that'll be my little workaround example here. So let's get Bloodhound open and we can get started here. So first thing I need to do is put a file name in there. So let me hit the change button. All right, so there, there is today's workshop file right there so now all of our work will get saved to the file and next i'm gonna well actually no well, i'm so used to just switching over to the logic tab here but first what i need to do right in order to to accomplish this kind of work around of getting signals from one chart and then placing the orders you know right on a different instrument what i need to do is add a chart or a time frame to Bloodhound here. So I have a one minute and I'm just gonna yeah, use a one minute chart here. And you'll notice that over on the right hand side, there's an instrument field, right? So I can put in here the QQQ. Uh, let's see here, well, maybe I can't. All right, so I have to select, let's see here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to create a custom instrument list here. All right. Yeah, you notice that you'll have you have to select your instrument list. And then from that, from the instrument list. So once you selected an instrument list here, you know, then this drop down menu for the instrument will populate all the instruments within that list here. So um so I will need to actually take a step back here and let's go through and make a custom instrument list, which man, I haven't done that in a long time. There we go, instrument lists. And let me add a, a list here. 
All right, just call it my list. All right, so inside of my list, let me just simply add the QQQ. That's all I need to do there. There. All right, so now I have a custom list with the actual um, base, um, you know, instrument that's going to generate the signals for me. <clears throat> okay, so now let's go back into Bloodhound and select on that one minute chart. And now from my instrument list here, let's see, there is my list. And from there, I can select the QQQs. There we go. All right, so now I have a one minute chart of the QQQs um, running inside of Bloodhound. All right, so now all of my logic can be running, or not, sorry, not all of my logic. All of my solvers can now be running on this uh, QQQ instrument, right? So let's do something, again, I just want to keep this, this system simple as, you know, the purpose of this is to, is to teach the, the concept of getting signals from one instrument and then placing orders on a different instrument right so let's just build a real simple crossover system here well, let's see here let's do a couple of SMAs all right we'll do a, a 10 and 30 SMA there let's see there we go all right and shrink that up a little bit there we go okay so now back in bloodhound here now we can switch over to the logic tab here and i can hit new start a new logic template and there yeah. all right so we're going to do a sma 10 crossing over the um sma 30 there now, when I go to my solver nodes menu, you'll now notice there is a QQQ, right? Default one minute chart here. You know, I guess I wouldn't really call this a time frame anymore because it's actually on a different instrument, right? So it's a QQQ one minute chart here that I have to select from. And I can select my, right, any of these solvers here. And these solvers will be running on that QQQ one minute chart. So let me grab a crossover solver. And you can also see on top of that solver, it tells you that this solver right is running on a different chart. So let's connect that in. And then let's go and well, actually, let me give this a name here first. So now I will just change the periods of my SMAs here to the 10 and 30. All right, so let's just go up there, make that quick change to the period. All right, so input A, right, that's gonna be our faster moving average. And then input B is gonna be the slower moving average. So let me just go up here and adjust that period to 30, like so. All right, there we go. Now. Something I haven't done yet, which I probably should have done before I started building any solvers here, is if you look on right on the um, chart that Bloodhound's running on, you know, Bloodhound's saying, hey, you need to reload, right, the chart. You need to, yeah, update or reload the chart. And this is so that NinjaTrader can build the QQQ data for Bloodhound. That's why that the chart has to be reloaded so that NinjaTrader yeah, can build that data uh, for and that and then Bloodhound can use it. So let's just do a reload of the chart here, F5. Okay, there we go. So now let's see one other thing. 
Let's see. I do have my crosshairs going. Oh, no, I don't. Yeah, let me turn on my global crosshairs. Um, there we go. All right, now let's put this on the global crosshairs here. There we go. <clears throat> so now, right, if we look at my crosshairs, we can see, right, this short bloodhound signal on the left, right, is correlating with where the crosshair is on the chart. Sorry, my crosshair is on the right, and so it's correlating with the chart on the left. And we can see it matches up with those white and red line crossovers, right? And then we put my cursor on the long signal here on the NQ, and we can see on the QQQ, right, my crosshair lines up with the, the, with the cross up on the QQQ. Right? So um, hopefully this also helps you know, you guys have kind of realized that, right, in order, another uh, requirement, you know, and or slash limitation of, of trading a different instrument, you know, from signals from another chart is that, right, your chart time frame have to match up as well. So really, this also, this only works when you're using a time-based chart, right? So if you're trying to get signals, say from a tick chart on the QQQ, well, obviously the QQQ tick chart is not gonna correlate with an NQ tick chart, right? They're, they're, they're you know, right? So a QQQ 100 tick chart is gonna look totally different from an a NQ futures 100 tick chart, right? If I change both of these to a tick chart, they're obviously going to look totally different, right? So again, so, you know, getting signals from one instrument and then placing orders on a different one, right? Those, the charts have to match up perfectly. Otherwise, your orders are going to be slightly, yeah, your orders aren't going to, aren't going to be the timing of them aren't going to be exact, right? Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, again, if if the QQQ was a 100 tick chart, right, the crossover, you know, might occur first, but then if Raven is running on the NQ 100 tick chart, right, well, this chart might be lagging, you know, the QQQ or the other way around, or the QQQ might be lagging, right, the NQ chart, you know, whatever it is, you know, right, there's gonna be a, a time difference between the two 100 tick charts, right? So, you know, so that's why that, that's why using anything other than a minute-based chart, you know, won't really work properly, right, because of that lag you know, that, that, that there would be between two different tick charts. So let's see here. Where are we at? Yeah. All right. So basically that's it. Um, really, you know, the concept is that you add, right, another chart to Bloodhound and then all of your solvers, you know, are going to be listed under, right, the other, other instrument chart here. And, you know, and you can go and build your logic here. And of course, you know, this only will run properly, you know, if, if it's a time-based chart, right? Otherwise you'll come in, you know, if you're trying to do this again on a non-time-based chart, you'll run into, you know, synchronization issues, you know, between the two different charts there, All right? So, all right, so we have a, a real simple system here, you know, getting signals from the QQQ. And so now, you know, I can pull up my strategy. And I can pull up Raven now. And let's add today's Bloodhound file. So there's today's Bloodhound file. 
And so for my um, entry, right, for my entry signals, I'm going to select the QQQ SMA, right, 1030 crossover. And there's no exit logic here. And I'll just put in a simple, yeah, let's do something real fast here, like a, a five and a five profit target and stop loss, you know, just to build something real quick. And the last last thing I need to do here is remember with, with strategies, you need to go into the setup section and enable your strategy in order to get it to run. So, all right, and there we go. And of course, now we can see that there are two bloodhounds on the chart. So we can see that this one is actually coming from Raven and the other bloodhound is actually bloodhound running on the chart. So you can see that that one's labeled bloodhound and the one down below, it's labeled Raven. So that way, you know, that way you know which which bloodhound is coming from Raven or Blackbird, you know, coming from the strategy and which bloodhound might just be just bloodhound itself on on the chart there. And so there we go. Uh, and of course, yeah, we can even see the back test results there. So, right. So that's kind of the, the limited way currently of how you can generate, you know, trade signals from one instrument and then have the orders placed on a different instrument. Mm -hmm.